Thank you, Mike. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, Yes, quick review of the Ohio State game. Uh, I think we've got most of it covered, but uh, you know, obviously a great win for for our team, for our program. Uh, was really, really pleased going back watching the film on um, on uh, on Sunday about just the overall mentality of our team. You know, I think we had a a great mindset going in. We certainly didn't play perfect by any stretch. We found a lot of things that that we got to do better at as a team. But our, our mentality was really at a high level the whole night, you know, and to be able to, to hold that mentality as the game went back and forth and was such a close game, you know, for the first three quarters, uh, you know, I was really, really pleased with that. So, uh, you know, it's, it was a big game. It was an important game to win. Uh, we're happy that we won it. But now we've now we got to all move on. Uh, our team's got to move on. Program's got to move on. We've got a lot of lot of ball left here, um, and uh, excited about the chance to play Tulane this week. Know a lot about their head coach Willie Fritz. Uh, have a lot of respect for the the man he is, the coach he is. Uh, a ton of success at his different stops. Very familiar with him at Sam Houston, um, Georgia Southern, some of the places he's been as up here lately, and has always been successful. Um, and have a lot of respect for Tulane as a program. You know, I've coached against them many times at East Carolina. Uh, always an athletic team. They're they're still playing very well defensively, just like they were there our last few few years uh, at East Carolina. Um, they 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 fly around. I think they only gave up 500 yards twice last year, which is again very very difficult to do. Um, they've got a really really good secondary um, and a corner. Um, uh, Perry Nickerson, I uh, remember playing against him a few years ago. That's really, really good. He's got a lot of career interceptions. He'll be one of the better corners that we play all year. Uh, you know, defensively, they're going to definitely stress us with a, uh, a spread option attack. Um, it's not option in the sense of like you see, you know, with Navy and some of the military schools, but it's a there's a lot of option based uh, rules to it. Um, be a lot of assignment football for our guys. It'd be something a little bit new and uh, something that we're going to have to do a good job of handling. So we're excited to be back home. Uh, would fully expect that, you know, Saturday night, you know, Norman will be will be really rocking. Should be a great atmosphere. And, and we're excited to uh, get that one teed off and get moved on. So uh, from there, we'll go to questions. What's the status of Mark Andrews and Will Johnson? Uh, Mark's good. We think Mark will play this week. He's, he's doing well, um, improving quickly. Uh, Will Johnson still up in there. That that'll uh, that decision hadn't been made yet. Lincoln, you, you brought up moving on to next week. You guys put so much emphasis on the start, which I mentioned a big part of that was last week's game. But how do you get through to these guys that there's some progression that's got to be made every week? Well, this is still the start. You know, the start for me is until we get to to Big Twelve play and for our team. That's that's. Uh, and we've got one more game until that. And so, uh, you know, it was our goal to, to play much better early, you know, and have a chance to win all three of these non-conference games was really important to us. And so we've got, we've got one more left and then, uh, and then into the, you know, the heart of the Big 12 schedule. So a lot of ball left to be played, a lot of things to get better at. Lincoln Baker came out uh, very first thing today and addressed the flag plant. Uh, were, were you expecting to hear that from him? Did you all talk about that at all before he came out today? Um, I'm not surprised. I mean, I because again, I know, I know him well enough to know what he meant by it. Uh, not anything, uh, not anything disrespectful towards Ohio State. It was an emotional game, um, and it was, you know, him celebrating with his teammates, and and you know, and that's uh, you know, I know that's why it happened. And so, uh, am I surprised he said something? No. Um, I'm glad that I don't think it should take away from the quality of the game that it was. There's two really, really good football teams on the field. It was a great atmosphere in Columbus. Um, they did a great job, um, and like I said, it was it was a fun game. And uh, so I think you know you see how by how many people watched it that the rest of the country agreed as well. So that to me should be the focus of what happened. The guy said after the game that you said that this should not be the highlight of the season being Ohio State. Is that something you're just trying to really instill into the guys that this is just week two? Goals ahead. Yeah, that's that's definitely part of it. Um, and you know, if we're going to be the team that we hope that we can be, then you know, it shouldn't be something I should have to address over and over. You know, their mindset should already be there. Um, you know, you have to be all in each week, and uh, 
we, we were all in as far as winning that game. Um, our guys really put it on the line all night. Uh, but again, you're only as good as your next performance, and we've got to be willing to do the same thing this week against Tulane. Like you after mentioned watching the game, what were your impressions of the offensive line and the way they performed on Saturday night? Yeah, they battled. You know, we, we really battled. Uh, it was it was a good fight. It was fun to watch. You know, just just not as a even a coach on one side or the other, just as a fan of the game. It was fun to watch. It was quality defensive line play. It was quality offensive line play. You know, we got them some, they got us some. Um, but I thought our guys really held in there, played really well. Um, even with the lineup change there, they, they really handled it well. So I was proud of the way we played up front. How you guys mentioned a lot uh, before the season started that you wanted to see these running backs live a little bit more. You've gotten through two games. I'm curious with Abdul's situation, was that something that was laid forward and laid, laid out there on the outset, like you weren't going to tolerate any ball security issues? or? Well, that's that's always a big deal with our backs. I mean, they're they're going to touch the ball more than anybody, and uh, you know, them and the quarterbacks, their their ball security, um, our trust in them is very high. But I, I, our trust in Abdul is good. I mean, I again, I told you guys after the game, it wasn't necessarily we just pulled Abdul because of that. You know, we were going to give some other guys some chances, and once he did fumble, we thought it was the right time to give those other guys a look. And Trey and Rodney got on a pretty good roll, and we just saw honestly, we saw that. There's not a reason to change right now. They're hot. They're they're playing well, and that's part of how it goes. You know, and I, I've said it many times. You look last year. There's games where Samaje had big games. There's games where Joe had big games, and and it wasn't always necessarily that that the other one was playing bad. But sometimes a guy just gets on a run, and you know you're not going to change it. Was there anything about Sutton not playing? Was it more uh, the style of play or something that happened there, or is he and is he still in the mix? Oh, he's definitely still in the mix. Yeah, I think. No, we planned to get him in some, and uh, again, you know, Trey got going pretty good early, and then uh, and Rodney as well with the touches that he had. So we just we just decided to not make a change. What did you see from Trey Sermon on the sidelines and all that? I mean, he uh, Baker said he seemed like he turned on the lights, so to speak, during that game. Did you see that also? I did. He's a uh, you know he's kind of a quiet, reserved kid, um, but in that arena, he he was not. He was not intimidated by any stretch. His, you kind of saw the competitiveness and fire start to come out of him, and he was very confident. Um, yeah, I was just, I like that. He just had a great look in his eye. I mean, as a coach, you can just, you can tell most of the time in environments like that, you just look them in the eye and you can tell if they're ready or if they're maybe a little skittish. And, and he wasn't at all. He was, he was ready to play and, yeah, handled it very well. Had, had a few, several things too that he's got to do better. But again, his mentality, like the rest of the team, was pretty good. Like, I mean, one of the big differences. Those younger guys. I mean, you got Trey, you got Grant, you got CD on the offense, Robert Kenneth on the on the defense. True freshman playing roles. When you recruited those guys, did you? Was there something about them that made you think maybe this group has guys that can be that influential that early? Yeah, I think. I don't know if I saw it as a group um, because that that a lot of times comes down to the individuals, but uh, it doesn't surprise me that a lot of guys out of that class are playing well um, and played well in that environment. They, they uh, you know, we, we're trying to that's what we're trying to do is push recruiting people that we feel like can either a come in here and help right now or b come in and push the guys that we have and make them better because we're just we're not going to try and take a lot of projects. You know, the guys that we think, well, maybe they're two or three years down the line. That's that's just not how we're going to recruit, you know. And I, I think if we're going to continue to push this thing and, and take it where we think it can go, that's that's got to be the mentality. And those guys have helped with it. You had a couple of guys mention that the freshman class was really tight mm -hmm. and they've helped the other guys become tight. What is it specifically <laughs> about these freshmen that are allowing them to mesh with each other as well as the upperclassmen? Well, I think they were, you know, they all committed so early that they were all around so much. You know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like these guys were a bunch of newcomers really coming in in that sense. You know, they'd been around our team, our program a lot. Uh, they'd seen kind of how we do things. They got to know our players. And so when they came in, it didn't feel like we were bringing in a bunch of new players. It really felt like we were just adding some guys that had already been around, and now we're just putting pads on them. And uh, so I think there was already some of that that continuity and chemistry built up even from the get-go. And then they've come in there and they've competed. You know, they hadn't backed down from our older guys. They hadn't backed down from challenges. And that's that's made our team better. 
Why do you think that we don't see more offenses utilize the fullback like you've utilized Dimitri, uh, especially Saturday night where you're running play action one way and throwing it to him another way, and there's nobody within 15 yards of him? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, there's not a lot of guys like him would be probably the biggest answer for me. You know, I mean, that's, again, a guy that's got to be able physically to do so many things well. And then the underrated aspect of it is is how much mentally a guy like that has to be able to handle. I mean, again, most most players are only capable of playing one, maybe one and a half to two positions, most players. You know, and, you know, for a guy like him, you're talking about, He's got to really be ready to play four, and that's that's hard to do. I think there might be a lot of coaches out there who would say, "Ah, oh, no, we don't use fullbacks. We're going to use wide receivers. We're going to use running backs to advance the football." Your offense seems to go wherever there's a weakness. Well, we try to, you know, and then you know wherever there's a weakness, and then just trying to to fit what our personnel can do. I mean, if we if we didn't have a guy like Demetri Flowers, we wouldn't be doing a lot of that stuff. Going back to Dimitri, when you think about him, he had to buy into his role. He's a guy who scored a lot of touchdowns in high school, and he's really accepted his role through these four years. He did, and he, you know, he was one that was a little concerned when when we first got here a few years ago. You know, you turn on these Carolina film, and there wasn't a lot, a lot of stuff like that. But again, we didn't really have a guy like that, and so, uh, but he he's trusted us, uh, you know, and he's trusted the the whole process and. You're right. He's bought in, and he's gotten better and better. He's improved on the things he's needed to improve on, and our, our trust in him has grown a lot, and that's why he's getting opportunities and, and why he's taking advantage of them. Just for you, when you got here and you said, okay, well, there is a guy like this, did you kind of, okay, how do I start incorporating a fullback in this offense? Or? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's been, uh, it's evolved a little bit. Um, first of, the first part of it was seeing kind of what he could do, and then as that's evolved, and, and and the rest of the offense has evolved. We've been able to fit it so that it, it not it not only fits for him personally, but it fits within the whole system and the whole way that we're trying to attack people. So it's been it's been a constant evolution and something that hopefully we'll continue to build on. Mike Baker said Jones. that behind the scenes that Dimitri's always pitching you different plays to use him <laughs> yeah, in. He is. I mean, do you how often do you guys use the things that he draws? Oh, up? about five percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> You don't Mike. have to worry about your offense becoming too big. You do too much. Yep. So you don't, I mean, oh, yeah. is that a thing? And Absolutely. How do you deal with it? Well, I mean, when we game plan, it takes us about 10 minutes to get all of our good ideas up there, and then it takes us about that many hours to get it narrowed down to – you know, to something we feel like is manageable. So that's that's always the hardest thing. The good ideas aren't hard. It's how can you practice it, that, you know, whittling it down to enough that you feel comfortable that the guys can get it and you can work it. Um, that's the thing that drives us crazy, but it's necessary. How promising was it that Michael Jones, who hadn't really done as much as maybe you and others might have thought, but, but he did the other night on a big stage? Yeah, he played well. You know, he stepped up, um, you know, made a – Couple big plays for us. The one down the field, you know, was a tough catch. You know, the corner did a good job falling off, and uh, it was kind of one of those distraction drills. That so was a tougher catch than what it looked like. Um, so yeah, I was I was proud of him. You know, he stepped up um, and uh, made some big plays on a big stage. Like, I remember Motley. people used to talk about uh, Mike Leach's how basic Mike Leach's play sheet was that he carried around with him. I noticed you kind of carry one. How 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 much more evolved is yours? I guess how much more advanced or, you know, not basic as it compared to like what he would use? Um, I don't know. There's, there's a few more words on there, but I mean, it's, it's the same, it's the same structure. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a notebook piece of paper. I mean, it's just, it's that. And we, we always, uh, everybody always thought his was just that size. You know, nobody ever realized that, you know, we, we, we've always folded it in a certain way. So <laughs> I think he, I, he would never tell anybody too. He would, I, he liked, Kind of the, I think he liked the thought that it was only this size. Thought it psyched out people maybe a little bit, but it. Uh, now we've always, I, I just kind of learned. To, I, I still do it like he does. I, you fold it a certain way, so in any situation, you just kind of know where those are, and you just flip right to it. Have you so involved then taking uh, bits and pieces from other coaches, other schemes, other concepts, whether it's you know Mike Marks's offenses or, or Mike Holmgren's offenses. Or you just take a little piece here and a little piece there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, we definitely we're we're open to new ideas. You know, we we look at new things. Sometimes it's things that that you know we as a staff come up with. Sometimes it's you know it's spawned from from something else that we saw. Um, but again, you got to make it fit. You know, and you got to be able to practice it. You got to 
it's not as easy as, oh, well, we saw this really good play that so and so ran, let's put this in, because you got to know the adjustments. You got to know, there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, so you've got to, it's good to, to branch out and have new ideas, but you got to you got to know what you're doing, too. Or now, how, how much he, has he solidified your guys' as secondary? It's helped. Yeah, it's helped. You know, there's not one side that, you know, that they can pick on a little bit. You know, that's... Uh, and, and really, Jordan Parker did that, you know, towards the end of last season, too. You know, and that's when we really started, you know, playing better defensively. And so it, it just it makes all the difference in the world, especially against, you know, the offenses that, that we go up against. Um, allows you to be more aggressive with the front, you know, to take more chances, to give less help. Um, and then, you know, so that's, uh, yeah, it's been a huge part, I think, for the, for the reason our defense has played. played so well at the end of last year and is playing well right now. Lincoln, how do you think Jeffrey Meade's doing? He's been kind of quiet so far these first couple games. He's played. He's played pretty good. He he's just been one of those guys that the, for whatever reason, the opportunities just hadn't he hadn't gotten a lot of balls. Um, but I don't think it's been because of anything he's doing wrong. It's just you know timing out that way. So uh, I think he's playing well enough that there's going to be up and down cycles with receivers. That's how it is. And uh, but I, I think his will come. Coach, with all these young guys with prominent roles uh, early on, how concerned are you about? them being able to handle that much success at an early point in their careers. You know, do you see them being able to focus and move forward and stay on this level? Yeah, I mean, they, we, we got to all keep it in perspective. You know, we, we've won two games. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, we've had success in two games. I mean, that's 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 great. You know, we're, we're, we appreciate it. We're happy about it. But, I mean, that's, there's so much more to go. And uh, so, they, uh, we've got some good leaders, and, and I think we as a staff will do a good job of making sure they keep it in perspective and know that we've got a long ways to go to get to where we want to be. When you do win a game like that, how much traction do you get in terms of recruiting? That's good. You know, I mean, it was one like that where, you know, most people in the country are watching, you know, was, was, was good. The reception's been good. But it, it gives you a little, a little boost, um, but I think it's – we're kind of on a steady upward climb right now, you know, with recruiting. So, uh, you know, I don't, at the end of the day, does that, does one game make a difference? You know, probably not with most players, um, but, but it helps as far as taking it the direction that we want it to go. Lincoln, how's uh, go ahead, John. Cody Ford left the game Saturday? Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing, he's doing okay. He's one of those guys we'll continue to evaluate through the week. Lincoln, Mike said after the game, he was very candid about this matchup last year. He didn't feel like he did a good job coaching. Did you sense him taking this personally? And I mean, I know you guys work hard regardless, but did you sense even a little difference in him leading up to this? I think we all took it personally, uh, you know, and him included. So yeah, I think if anybody in this program didn't take it personally, then they're they're in the wrong program. The big well, issue last year was, and last year's game was those after the whistle penalties, Lando Brown, a lot of those that didn't have those on Saturday. How much has he grown as a leader on this football? Team? Well, he's always been a leader. I mean, he's he's been a leader even since he was a pup. Um, but no, I think he's I think he's a little bit more mature now, you know. And and, and again, trying to find balance between again the, the mentality and the edge he brings to our offensive line. I mean, I can't sit here and say that it's worth some of the penalties or all the penalties that, like that he had last year, but it's worth a couple of them. I mean, really. I mean, it's. You you've got to play, especially against a group like that the other night. You've got to play with such an edge that you know, and he he brings that to our line. I mean, there's no question. A lot of other guys have followed suit. So, uh, but he, he is now finding that he can do both. He can he can find that edge, but also do it within the rules. You find other guys do play with that edge as well. Like you said, they're following suit. They're kind of following his example. Oh yeah, yeah, I think so. That's that's. Uh, you know, Coach Beanbow's kind of created that culture, you know, within our offensive line that that's, that's what's expected. Orlando's been one of the guys to lead the charge on that. But that, that group is, uh, that group definitely is, is on edge all the time, and, uh, and they play like it. How much is that filtering over to the defensive side of the ball because they seem to be playing with much more of an edge this year as well? Yeah, I, I think the competitiveness uh, has on the line of scrimmage throughout spring ball and camp, you know, has added to that. Um, and then I just think Mike and his staff have done a really good job with those guys. Their mentality's in a great place. Um, they've done a good job of putting them in position to make plays, and you start to get that confidence and and get rolling. Then then that edge continues to come with it. And then I would also you know point out that again I think our defensive leadership is 
is uh, in a good place right now, and that, that means that that means a lot to it as well. When you've got such a big game like Ohio State so early in the season, is it tough to balance opening up the playbook and still not wanting to show your hands so early in the season as an offense? Mm -mm. I mean, everybody thinks we saved all that stuff. If we'd have thought any of those plays were good against UTEP, we would have ran them against them. I mean, it's 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 one week at a time, and we tried to find the best game plan we could for UTEP. And we tried to find the best one we could for Ohio State, and we'll do the same thing with everybody else on the schedule. You guys have gone for it pretty often on fourth down so far early. You haven't had a ton of success yet. What do you kind of see there um, in, in those play calls and in your lack of success so far? What, what needs to be tweaked? Or? Yeah, no, we uh, we've been in a bunch of situations in these games early. We're you know we're kind of right there in the 35, 40 yard line where it's a little too close to a little too close to punt it. And uh, you know you're talking about a really really long field goal. Most of them have been early in games. I think um, we had one in the other game that we were just running out the clock, which skews it a little bit. Um, but no, yeah, we've had a couple things called that we either you know didn't make the play or was a bad call by me. So we will got to do better there. What was it like for you as a first? Year coach, first year coach, a first time head coach on the road like that in that situation. You're running around, you're hugging all the people, you found your wife, and then you get off the field and there's Bob Stoops. Yeah, he's waiting for you. What was that like? Yeah, it was that was it was special. It, it was, you know, again, he's a huge part of what we're doing. Um, always has been, always will be. We wouldn't all be, you know, in this position in this program without him. So. I know, like I said, I know there's you know been a change here, but it's he's still a big part of what we're doing. Our our players, all that you know, love having him around and the effort to be able to be able to walk off that field and see him there was was pretty cool. There was a TV shot of you and uh, Ruffin uh, together. Can you describe that moment? And it seems like it might have been kind of special. Too. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, he and I have been through a lot together, and you know, he he left a lot of things on the on the East Coast to. To come back here to, to coach with us, and uh, yeah, so and we've been a part of some pretty good road wins before. We we, we definitely cherish those. So that was uh, you know it was a great moment with him and all the guys. Sorry, Lincoln. Mike Mike Stoop said after the game that uh, you know you as a head coach, the players really react because you do take chances. You're willing to go for and things like that. Is that just part of your DNA? Almost you you, you don't want to play field position if you're at the 35. You, if you got fourth, three, fourth, and four, you always want to be able to go for it. That's I, I don't think there's ever a blanket answer for it. I think it's, you know, game situation. I think it's, you know, how good you feel about your offense, how good you feel about your defense, you know, who you're playing. I mean, there's just a lot that goes into it. So I, I think I think if I put my ego up there up front and said, well, we're going to go for it every time here, sometimes I'd be making the right call for the team and sometimes I wouldn't. And so I'm just, I'm just trying to do, take each and every decision there like it's its own deal, and uh, just try to do the best I can on each and every decision. Not worry about how many times we do or don't in the end. Lincoln, how happy were you for Jordan Smallwood after everything he's been through the yeah. last two, three years? Yeah, that was that was that was yeah great for him. I was really happy for him. He's he's been through a lot injury wise and. He's always been a, a great team player, has always showed up a lot, um, played very well for us on teams, played well for us at the end of the year offensively last year. He's, he's done a good job so far this year. So to get that, that first one in the end zone there was pretty cool. Lincoln, so much was made over the offseason about the changes defensively, the even front, things like that. Was that overblown a little bit? As well, far as says, just says was, was, was there any big change, or is it more just the players that you have and the way that y'all are playing defensively? So, I think more the mentality of that group right now is probably you know the the biggest thing that stood out. The mentality and the leadership. I mean, it's our scheme last year was good, and our scheme this year is good. I mean, everybody's got good schemes, you know, and so. Uh, Mike and them do a great job, but they've they've done an even better job again with their with our guys' heads, you know, and just making sure that we're in the right frame to play great team defense and to play the type of defense that this university's been known for for a long time. And so, uh, and and we got a group that takes it personal right now. So you've got uh, the versatility then to play three man front or four man front, right? Yeah, we can we can do a few things. Yeah, yeah, we can. That's one. Okay. Yeah. Like, how much have you seen Parnell Motley grow? Uh, you know, back in the spring, kind of had that big pick in the um, spring game, but um, and then has one Saturday. You know, how much has he grown? Uh, you know, for your defense. A lot, a lot. He he just 
he came out in spring and was a, you could see the talent in his true freshman year in the fall. Um, just couldn't quite put it together. Um, but you could see the talent, you could see the competitiveness. Um, and then in spring, he just, he was like a different guy. I mean, the confidence was there. He was finally kind of settled in, I think. And, and when you work as hard as he does and it means as much to you as it does to him, then you're going to get better at it quickly. And he did. And he's, he's been making those plays. He made them all spring. He made them all camp. So, you know, I, it didn't surprise me that he got that one. And if I'd have been smart enough to review the other one, he would have had two. As young as you are with, you know, guys like Kenneth Murray and C.D. Lamb, is there any other experience they could, I mean, if they just had a regular road game, you know, not a top five matchup, would, would that have helped them as much moving forward as this, this helped them? I, hard to say. Any, any rep they get right now in a game is helpful. I mean, they're just, they're growing constantly. They still, they still make plenty of mistakes, but, but they, they're not afraid in the moment and they continue to get better. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you just got to take each one as it is, you know, and hope they continue to grow at the pace they are right now. Lincoln, how much of yourself do you see in Baker? I've never been asked that question. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we think a lot alike on the field and in some ways, and then in some ways we're a lot different and balance each other out. So, you know, maybe that's why we've been able to work well together. Who's the bigger risk taker, you or him? <laughs> Depends on the situation, yeah. Um, I think we we play well off of each other. You know, there's 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 some times for both, um, but we we make it work. Like, what did you think of the dead on the kickoff returns? It looked like close. you got some promise there, don't you? Close, think? really close. You know, we we fit some things up really well. Um, you know, a lot of those, a couple of those, we were one block away. But he's he's got the speed and and the fearlessness that he hits it, and we got to get just a little bit better there, and he's going to have a chance to pop a few. You get to the point where you take field goal snaps for granted. Just what happened on the play? Happened. Yeah, we made a we made a little adjustment up front. It was my fault. We made a little adjustment up front, which inhibited Wesley. I'm not going to get into all the details, but it was Wesley was fine. He was a little low on the punt snap, um, but that snap, that one was on me. Punt snap or the field goal snap was on me. Oh, right. yeah. When you come into a season and. Um, as you know, this year you come in with guys that people don't really know, and you have to incorporate them. And you talk about you see light switches come on, you discover guys. Does that? How much more fun is that to kind of coach and discover what guys can do each game? And does incorporating all these different guys help chemistry in any way? It does. It does as long as the program is set up to where people understand that the best players right now are the ones that are going to play. You know, I think sometimes in other programs. It, it's a little bit more of a balancing act, you know, where you've got maybe some juniors or seniors that have been in the program that maybe feel like, you know, they're entitled to just this spot just because somebody left or because they've been in the program or don't really accept the freshmen as quickly as we do. But I, I think this, and it doesn't have anything to do with me. It's just been well established here that the best guys are going to play and that's the way things are going to be. And uh, I think our guys get that coming in. So there's an acceptance of that right off the top. So I think it, I think it probably does help team chemistry here, helps the team grow together. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what I think. You said earlier that you're not surprised that these true freshmen have, are doing what they're doing, but I think you would have to admit it's not remotely common. So, is it just, do you just hope that it happens? I mean, do you really ever have a clue that it comes together like this for guys as true freshmen? No, I mean, you never know exactly. I mean, you've got certain feels on guys, but no, you, you, you don't know exactly until they do it. Um, and so, uh, but I, if these guys hadn't showed us the things that they did in, in fall camp and then the ones that were here in spring uh, do it there as well, then they wouldn't be playing. You know, we'd have somebody else out there. So we, by the time we got a chance to get to know them and watch the way they competed and approach things and, and see their ability level, we, we've got a decent idea going in. Curious that if you um, Saturday was so monumental, if you've heard from, gotten messages from Mike Leach or you know anybody like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have. I got. I've got. I got a few texts. Yeah. Did you got one name? No, there's a lot. I mean, just kind of the same, the same old crew. You know, everybody was excited about it, and and uh, a lot of people watched it. So yeah, some good, good back and forth with some of our guys, but um, that was good. Yeah. How did Saturday's atmosphere compare to? Uh, Knoxville two years ago. 
or did it at all? It was not. I mean, they were both great atmospheres. I mean, you know, hundred plus thousand. You know, both of them. You know, both big time games on week two. Um, they were, yeah, they were, they were similar in a lot of ways. Very similar. Great atmospheres. What does it say about Baker to be able to work all these new pieces in together in an atmosphere like that without Mark Andrews and to be able to produce the way he did? Just trust. You know, he's just, he's trusting the whole thing, you know, better um, earlier than he has. And uh, so he's, he's got a lot of trust in those guys right now, a lot of trust in what we're doing offensively. Your linebackers played in tonight? Better, better. We played. Emmanuel played pretty good both games. Uh, we thought we didn't think Caleb played as good as we wanted him to play the week one. Uh, thought he played very well the other night. Uh, Kenneth Murray took a big step. You know, really played a lot more confident, um, made more plays, played faster, played more physical. Um, so I was happy with the step he took. You know, Obo, you know, was a little bit more of a presence in this game as well. That's a challenge for those guys, especially right because. You've got the JT Barrett factor. Uh, you've got those powerful running backs. Um, you don't know exactly what they're going to do because they have a first-year offensive coordinator. Yep. Yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah, there was a little bit of guesswork there. Um, and yeah, and then they just present so many troubles. I mean, they one play it's speed option, next play it's you know power read, next play it's crossing routes, next play it's you know it's it's a lot of stuff. And uh, but our guys handled it well.